Hello, my name's Holly Sandyfoot and I'm a socially engaged artist. So a socially engaged artist is an artist that works with people to make art. So it's a lot of fun. So it means I get to do things like this today. Uh, so I'm going to be running two sessions with you uh, using sound and music to, to really get you to experience Blythe for Church. So I made a visit to the Blythe for Holy Trinity Church this week and absolutely loved it. Um, some people call it the Cathedral of the Marshes, which I really love because it really stands out against the landscape. Um, it's a really wonderful place and in the next two sessions I want to really try and take you there through Zoom if that's possible. So I spent a day there this week recording both sounds and taking photographs to document it so that I'm able to share it better with you. And I'm hoping that I've captured some of the magic. Um, whilst I was there, I was hoping to find some evidence of Black Shuck. And I don't know if you've heard of Black Shuck, but supposedly it's a ghostly black dog and a famous East Anglian legend. So on the 4th of August, 1577, according to legend, Black Shook is said to have burst through the doors of the church to a clap of thunder. He ran up the nave past the last large congregation, causing the church steeple to fall through the roof. As he left, he supposedly left scorch marks on the north door, which can still be seen to be in the church to this day. So if you do get to visit then, um, the church, then why not see if you can find them? There was also a fierce electrical storm on the same day as this is supposed to have happened, but I'll let you make your mind up about whether it was really black shift or not. So um, if you'd like to pause at this point, I'm just going to tell you what we need for the session if you need to go and get, get anything. I've tried to keep it really simple so that, so that um, everyone can do this from home. So what you will need is um, a few bits, good few bits of um, copier paper like this. Um, and either pens or pencils. I'm using Sharpies today just to make it easy to show you, but pencils are probably better because we're going to be doing a lot of mark making, and with pencils, you can make a lot of different marks easily. That's great. And um, I've got some scissors for later, but that's not essential. You can manage without those. Okay. So we're going to start on our first exercise which is to do some mark making. But um, I've found eight words, and what I'd like really is for you to try and think of the marks that, that, that these, these words remind you of. So to do that, we're just gonna start with taking our paper, and we're gonna fold it into eight, make eight different boxes. So firstly, fold it in half, like this. I'm gonna fold it into quarters, like this, so this is just A4 copy of paper, and then again into eight like this, eight like this, so that you end up with eight sections like this. So I'll just give you a minute to do that. And if at any time you feel like things are going too fast for you, you can always pause the video and then, then come back to it. Okay, so we've got eight words. And the first one, I'll, I'll do an example. So I'm going to use the word soft. So I'm going to make marks that make me think of the word soft. I'm going to be quite gentle. I'm going to do some curvy lines. Soft, soft. I'm not pushing too hard. You know, this is, doesn't, you can't get this wrong. This is about what those words mean to you. So here's my first example. You can see I've done it in my first little box. I'll put that a bit closer so that you can see. That's okay. So it's quite gentle. It's not. It's not too um, too strong. So um, if you start in your first box, and we'll go for the word soft first. So you've got thirty seconds to do that. Starting from now, I'll count for you. You can have a go at the same time. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, done. And the reason I'm doing this quickly is because I don't want you to fuss too much about it. It's because it's not about um, a perfect picture. It's just being really expressive. That means sort of feeling what you're doing. And it does, doesn't need to look like anything. So the next um, word I'm going to choose is harsh. So um, I might use more jaggedy lines. I might press a bit harder, like so. Um, but it's really going up to you. So you've got 30 seconds in the word harsh. That's lovely. Your next word is the word rustle. So when I think of the word rustle, I think of rustling leaves or treading on leaves, it's sort of a crunchy sort of sound. So what sort of marks would you make when you think about the word rustle? Again, 30 seconds starting from now. That's lovely. The next word I've got for you is calm, so very different to Russell. And then um, we use hot, we use sort of heavy lines, we use soft lines, we use curved lines or straight lines. It's really up to you. So if you can draw the word calm. Hey, that's lovely. So our next word is windy. So I don't know how you're going to draw windy, but let, let's have a go. So we've got 30 seconds starting from now. that's lovely so the next word is heavy so when i think of the word heavy i think of dark lines thick lines and filled in spaces but um it'll be different for you so here we go heavy we've got 30 seconds Lovely. The next word is quiet. So how do you draw quiet? Then so 30 seconds from now. Lovely. So your last word is buzz. So think about how you draw the word buzz. Okay, that's lovely. So after that, you should end have ended up with something like this. It's not beautifully done. That's all the different words. And this now acts as a map. So we're going to be listening to some sounds later. And you can listen to a soundscape that I recorded. And this will help you. You can use this in your drawing later to refer back to and to really connect into the different sounds that you're going to hear and what they might, the lines might be like for those. So next, we're going to do a continuous line drawing. But we are going to do this to 
um, a soundscape that I recorded at Blythe Church this week. And so a continuous line drawing is when we don't take our pen off the paper. And so we're going to do the same thing that we're responding to the sounds with mark making. So this is quite abstract. We're not drawing, if you hear a bird, we're not drawing a bird and we're not going to draw a bee if we hear it. We're just going to draw the sounds that they make in the same way as the mark making. So your picture will be more about the, the sounds and what you hear and what you feel, not, not, not what you see. So I am going to share my screen with you now. Hi, I hope you enjoyed that. Okay, so now um, I'm going to talk about an artist. So just then we were connecting sound to drawing. And so uh, Vasily Kandinsky was a Russian artist and um, he had something called synesthesia, which means he literally saw colors and when he heard music. And when he was painting, he would, um, he actually heard music, which is wonderful. So he was born in Moscow, Russia in 1866, and he enjoyed music and learned to play the piano and cello as a child. He was also one of the first abstract artists. And so that's kind of what we've been doing today. So we're not drawing real things. We're not drawing from real life. We're drawing from sound. And um, Kandinsky very much uh, drew in this way too and painted in this way. Um, he felt he could express his feelings and music through colours and shapes in his paintings. For example, I like this, he thought that yellow had the crisp sound of a brass trumpet. And he said, colour is the keyboard, the eyes are the harmonies, 
The soul is the piano with many strings. The artist is the hand that plays, touching one key or another to cause vibrations in the soul. I think that's lovely. And I'm just going to share my screen with you again, or with me, just to show you some of his work. There we go. So this is one of his images. And you can see here, he used, um, he used a lot of triangles, squares, and circles and to, kind of, to, to represent feelings and emotions. We'll talk a little bit about that as well in a minute. And I'll just share another picture with you. So here's another one. So you can see very much how his pitch is very musical and he, he was very abstract, although sometimes in his paintings you can make out what things once were. I think there's some Cossack soldiers in there somewhere and I think there are also pianos. So he's not completely abstract. I'm going to stop the show now. So when we looked at that first painting, you'll notice we saw the triangles, the squares, and the circles. And I'm quite interested, Kandinsky um, associated uh, different feelings and different colours with those shapes. And so what I'd like you to do first is want to see what feelings and, that you associate with those, those shapes. So on a piece of paper, just in the middle, what I want you to do is to draw a triangle. Don't um, worry too much about what this looks like, so it's just an exercise. So then draw a square and then just draw a circle. So very simply, like this. Just do that in Sharpie whilst you're doing that to make sure you understand, you can see that properly. So a triangle, a square, and a circle like so. Even the camera's going a bit funny as I do that. Okay, so what I want you to think of is what colour do you associate with all of these? So with your triangle, what, what colour do you think of when you think of a triangle? What colour do you think of when you think of a square? And what colour do you think of when you think of a circle? So what sort of feelings do you associate with these in different colours? So I'll give you a minute just to do this. And I'm going to I'm going to have a go to. So if you don't have the right colours, you can just write in what colour you, you think it is. For example, in the middle of the square, you could write in uh, yellow. And there's no wrong or right to this again. Just whatever you feel it is. Okay, so I've just scribbled this in. So here's mine. So I was thinking that triangles were red. And I think they reminded me of the red um, triangles that we have in traffic cones. And then I've got a blue square and a green circle. Okay, so Kandinsky thought that everyone would have the same idea about this, but I don't think they do. So this is what Kandinsky thought was right. He thought it was a yellow triangle, a red square, and a blue circle. And he thought that the triangle would, the yellow triangle would cause aggressive feelings, the square would be calm feelings, and the circle spiritual feelings. And as you saw in that picture first, they almost become like symbols in, in his paintings. Okay, can we move on now? Okay, what we're going to do next is just have a little bit of fun and try drawing with two hands. So that is drawing with a pen in each paper. And we're going to, I'm going to share the, the music, the soundscape again, and we're going to draw to that. And it's just really interesting to see how this makes a difference to your drawing when you use two hands. I'm going to share that now. So um, for us, that's a before, it's really, again, you can't get this wrong. We're not going for anything beautiful or perfect. I'll just show you. So it's just really enjoying it. Just really feel the music. You know, really, well, there's the soundscape. I keep wanting to call it music, but really feel the sound. Where does it take you? Where does it go up? And just following. So, we, we, you know, it's, we're, we're not looking for, for beautiful here. Two colours is quite fun because you can see what's going on a bit better with each hand. And, very interesting to see how the hands feel each other. And again, we're going to have three minutes. 
Yes. So I'm going to press play and three minutes from now. And hope you enjoyed that. And so, so now we're just going to try another fun one again. So you need two pens again for this one, but this or two pencils, whatever you've got. This time we're going to hold two pencils in one hand and we're going to do the same thing for three minutes. So we're going to draw in the same way to see how it feels holding two pencils. So you get two lines at once. That's a lot of fun to do. You can't see my yellow bit that one very well. But there you go. So I'm going to share again. And again, listening to the sounds that you can hear responding to those and how powerful change.
explain that. Um, so now we're going to move on to some more intuitive drawing. So you can use any of the techniques that we've just learned to do that. So you can use two hands or you could, you could use two pens if you enjoyed any of those. We're going to do it with a longer session. Now we're going to do, we're going to do it for about seven minutes. So just your time to really sort of relax and enjoy the process. And so if you want to, you can do a drawing, you can imagine yourself being in the church um, and being amongst the grasses and, and what you can see and you can draw the things literally that you can see. So not in an abstract way, but you can continue working in the way we have done and just keeping a very kind of um, hearing the noises and drawing the noises of mark making. So it's really up to you. You can have fun. It's your time to experiment and explore in ways that you like to. So we're going to have seven minutes to do this, quite a long time. So enjoy and relax and just don't, there's no sort of expectations for this to be good. No one has to see it. So just enjoy it. That's what art's about. It should be about the doing, not, 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 what we, not what we end up with. So here we go, got seven minutes.
There we go. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope that I get to see some of your lovely pictures soon. And I'm getting a bit fuzzy again. Okay, so for the last um, little bit of our session, we're going to look at an artist called Richard Serra and we're just um, going to have a bit of fun with some of the drawings that we've done. And it's a good way not to take things too seriously. So we're going to change them and do other stuff with them. So I'm going to show you my screen and I'll show you his work. You may have seen um, Richard Serra's work outside Liverpool Street Station. It's one of his buildings. But he, um, he, his work, he created a list of verbs and a verb is a doing word. So he used them as a resource to create his work from, to give him inspiration. So I've chosen a few simple one of those for you to work from. And so what I'd like you to do, I'm just going to pause sharing for a little bit, is that I'd like you to take some of your drawings. So you might have, once there's something you really like, then keep it. Don't want to ruin it. You can have lots of drawings, lots of scribbles and things like this, but I certainly do. But um, that we can then do something else with. So I'll give you an example. For this one, I just took one of my drawings and I chose the verb to rotate. So I cut it up, so that's what I use my scissors for, but you could tear it if you don't have any. And so I cut up my picture into circles and I've rotated them around. And the, this one looks a bit, a bit wild, <laughs> but I folded it, pleated it, and then, then I've cut it up as well. But before I've also woven my pictures, so I cut them into strips and wove them together. But if you have a look at the words and you choose one word and then take one of your drawings or two of your drawings, you could merge them together. That's up to you. So I'll show you those words again. Here we go. So unless you, and you can also think, if you can think of your own word, that's fine as well. So you can have 10 minutes to do this, that's plenty of time. And so if you finish, um, you can always fast forward to the end or you could do a couple of drawings and do a couple of things with it. But I'm going to play the soundscape to you and that's really just going to be background noise in this case. But um, So I'm just going to give you a minute to choose and maybe it might be worth just writing down a couple of those that you really like. So have a little look and choose maybe two or three you can come back to. So I'll read them out to you just in case anyone's struggling. So it's to crease, to fold, to bend, to twist, to crumple, to tear, to suspend. So to suspend means to hang up, and to cut, to rotate, and to rotate means to put it around in a circle. Okay, so we've got a couple of those verbs, those doing words. And so I'm gonna share the sound again, the last bit of the recording. And with this, you'll find at the end that there's a bit of recording from inside the church as well of, of some singing, which was actually taken from last year, but it's very lovely, so I wanted to play it for you. So you've got 10 minutes of this.
So I hope you enjoyed that. And um, I hope there's some way I can see your lovely picture. I've certainly enjoyed doing it with you. And well done if you've managed to keep to the end. And we'll hopefully see you soon for the next session, which will be using um, pictures and we'll be making a map of a walk. And um, so I'd encourage you also, if, if, if um, you have time and you've got a mobile phone, to go and do some recordings for yourself because the making of the recordings is so much fun. So you can go and make some recordings in your garden or in your local park or even inside your house and to see what different sounds you can find. And you have to be quite patient as well. So enjoy that. And it's been lovely to meet you, even if it's on Zoom. Bye-bye.